this week, Dan Sheeran was sentenced to six months in prison, prison for the harassment of former girlfriend Brianna Robinson. Brianna was bombarded with over 1,400 text messages in the space of 30 days. Shortly after she tragically died falling from a Gold Coast high rise, her mother spoke to a current affair last night. They're the worst things you could possibly say to another human being, especially someone you supposedly love. And do you think he ever loved her? Uh, no, at all. Not at all. I don't think he knows what love is. You sent messages to her abusing her, swearing at her. What sort of man does that? For her to find him and him to be, you know, such an evil person in every way. So frighteningly, stalking and harassment is more common than we think. Over 30% of the Australian population has been exposed to stalking. Yeah, psychotherapist Dr Karen Phillip joins us now with more. This statistic is alarming, I would have thought, and, and certainly um, higher than, than most Australians would assume. Um, mm. You say that there are distinct groups of stalkers. What are they? There's actually five distinct groups, but you can sum them up in three. There's the intimacy seeker, there is the rejected stalker and there's the predator. Now the predator is obviously the most dangerous. The rejected has, a, has had a relationship, usually short term, with the, uh, with the victim. But the intimacy seeker is the one that most people are affected by and that is where they believe that they have a relationship with you when in fact they've never even met you. Yeah, uh, so what triggers this? I mean, I find it fascinating. What triggers this sort of behaviour? There's a number of, of things that can trigger it. Usually it's related to what we call an attachment disorder that a child experiences from a very young age. Oh. Very difficult to get, to get over and get past that. Um, the, they want, they have a desire and a need to be loved and wanted by somebody. They usually find it very difficult to form a relationship of their own, so they simply create it. And project it onto somebody else. That's right. And I guess a lot of the problems stem from the fact that it can take a while for, for, for people to see their true colours. It, it can. When you, when you meet somebody, and a lot of the stalkers will try and introduce themselves to you and meet you. If, so is uh, that a warning sign? Well, one of the warning signs, if you do happen to meet one of these people, is that they they believe that they've known you for years. So and too familiar? Oh, very, very much so. And also, not just with you, but also family and friends. Right. They also will text you consi consistently. They also want to be the main priority in your life. So they expect you to respond back to them instantly and immediately. So it is a, it is a major control issue that they have. The other ones that, um, the other side type of stalkers, the intimacy stalker, they can cause a lot of anguish with anybody because they, the person doesn't know who they are, generally. They may approach them on Facebook, Twitter, anything at all like that. And even if you respond back, then you start a relationship. So the biggest thing is to try and reject all of that and just simply ignore them as best you can. Especially yes. in this new social media world that would probably be heightened. So if you believe you are being stalked, mm -hmm. uh, and you should just go to the police, obviously, and report it straight away. But are there some other measures that we can take, or is it just the police, you think? Well, the police is certainly a good, a good start and they often will contact the stalker and let them know that their behaviour is unacceptable. But again, if they do uh, stalk you on Facebook, social media, never respond to them at all, ever. Not even to tell them to go away because the, the stalker will then believe that they have a relationship with you because you have responded to them. But I also suggest that they, that they tell their family, their friends and work colleagues exactly what is going on. That's why I think the figures that we have are so shocking because most people don't discuss it and don't mention it. Yeah, they may say it to their partner or to their family, but they don't actually talk about it with work colleagues or, or their friends. So we need to really ensure that people, if they are experiencing this, to let people know. And also ensure personal safety. Lock your windows and doors. Make sure that you travel in public or with somebody. Just small things like that can really ensure your own safety and make you feel a lot more protected. All right, Dr. Good advice. Thank you so much. Thank really you. good advice.